Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Center. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Rush Hour. A very good episode, uh, just because Cole kind of brought it up. She made a comparison of what she was doing, knocking that guy out with a champagne bottle to Die Hard. It did seem very much like a Die Hard episode because of the circumstances, it being a hostage situation and everything. Um... It's a very good episode because it's like it's, it was another kind of Cole centric episode. We had one somewhat last episode because the case kind of dealt with her, you know, a past case she had dealt with, and she was a bit part in this episode too. I really like the fact is that um, this it shows you how much of a capable cop she is. Like she handled that situation very amazingly. Even though she was the only cop on the inside, she handled it very well. Was able to, you know, contact cops. I was not expecting things to kind of go as well as they did. Her being able to get cops there like she did. The fact is that she was able to stay, like, still going on. Like, she was still able to, like, kind of move about, kind of hidden about. That went on a little bit longer than I thought it would. I thought it would just be a situation where she would have gotten caught sooner than she did. So, just shows you just how much of an amazing cop she is. I love the reason why she was there in the first place is because she was there on a date with a guy that she didn't really have that much interest in. She she, she was even having that whole conversation with the bartender being like, oh, is it is it me? Am I self-sabotaging this? Because I just, I'm just not feeling anything from him. And the bartender's just like, I mean, it's my first day. She's like, you've been a big help. It's kind of, like I said, we don't really know what her relationship is. Like, do, do correct me on that. Has that ever come up, like, what her, like, if she, has she ever been married in the past? Uh, I guess not. Maybe she's just always kind of had the single life. Maybe she's had relationships, but never anything, you know, extremely long-lasting. So, I, I don't know. You know. Um, but then there's that whole, like... But also on her part, it's the whole like, oh, she's signaling Carter and everything. Well, multiple occasions. For one, sending him that text. And it's sad that autocorrect had to screw her over. Just shows you just how terrible autocorrect is. It, it screws over your life at the most important times. You could end up saying, like, sending a text to someone saying, I love you. And it just ends up autocorrecting for some weird reason. Some weird reason. I don't know why I said reason. Like I'm Elmer Fudd or something. Reason. And turns into, hey, uh, dog glove or something. I don't know. I don't know why it took me so long to get to the next time. My point is, it sucks that she got screwed over by uh, Otto Craig. It was interesting that they were able to obviously figure it out later on. Carter was like, oh, pickle ring. I got it, you know. I'm also her signaling Carter with the whole watch thing. But she, later on in the episode, Carter's like, oh, I, I can't believe you have so much faith in me. First, you know, when, when you had the phone, you contacted me. Plus the whole signaling with me with the watch. She's like, actually, I wasn't. I was signaling anyone that would, you know, see it. Granted, you know, I didn't even know you were out there. It's just, you know, I think she said that just because she didn't want to, like, be too, like, congratulatory towards him. Because I think she thinks... Oh, not just things. She knows that if she congratulates him, it's just going to go to his ego, and he will never let her live it down. He's already got an extremely inflated ego as is. Just adding more fuel to it would just make him just intolerable. Granted, probably in her case, she's thinking he's already intolerable enough as it is. But, um... Because I even love when he was originally texting her because it was from an unknown number. And he's just like, oh, this must be from that girl I met before. Uh, busy right now. I'll text your sexy ass later or something. And she's like, Carter, it's me, you dumbass. And it's like, oh, it's Cole. It's like, that's got to be a weird thing, uh, texting something like that to your boss. She probably won't let him live that now. But also on this side of the episode, but also on the other side of this episode, I also like the fact is that Carter and Lee kind of had to go rogue in this episode just because it's like they were basically dealing with the two negotiator people. The one that they know, the guy Holt, as well as the the one that kind of supersedes him in this situation just because they were so... Holt was a little more reasonable. He was able, you could Dee Dee was able to kind of convince him later on in the episode, but that other guy was just kind of a a tool. They it was bas they basically kept saying like, oh, this is textbook. You go through it like this. Things are going to run down like this. Which to me, it's very idiotic to think like that. You can't compare every situation to previous situations. Yes, they can act as a foundation and like, okay, this is how t things typically roll. We should keep this in the back of our mind. But every situation is different, you know. Uh, you know, for them to be like, oh, it's just a textbook hostage thing. They're just going to give you these weird demands and that they want all these people set free, not even considering the fact is, oh, there's something more to it. 
that there's a deeper plot going on behind the scenes. And I mean, granted, Dee Dee was able to convince a uh, whole, like I said. I really like the fact that the matter is what that meant. Kalina finding out, like, oh, we're going to run the staircase. Like, that was kind of something that was just kind of thrown out there like it was supposed to mean something. But it never really re came up that much. It was referenced, like, two or three times. But it never really went anywhere until the Holt brings it up. Like, essentially, they were referencing the negotiator's playbook, you know, because he was saying, like, oh, this is textbook. It's like, and DD points it out. It's like, yeah, the fact of the matter, if someone knows what a negotiator's book is, that, you know, knows it step by step, they'd be able to make you think, oh, this is a typical hostage negotiation situation when it actually is something more. And it's basically saying, like, because Staircase was referencing that because that's kind of what it's called. And so I thought that was kind of a pretty neat kind of like, I don't know, like that, that's what that meant at the end of it. I thought literally meant a staircase. Like, I assumed it was just kind of like, oh, we have a back door out of here or something like that. But no, it, that was kind of a metaphor for that. So that was pretty cool. But that guy was, but like I said, the higher up guy was just so adamant about not listening, even threatening to arrest Carter and Liam. I mean, granted, Holt was kind of like that too, but that dude was like that first, just being like, oh, you got all this flimsy information. He's like, have you been in like over 50 hostage um, negotiations, stuff like that? And Carter's like, no. He's like basically saying, so shut up. I know what I'm doing. I'm experienced here. You're just a running mill cop almost. I like, dem like looking down on Carter and stuff like that. It's like, just because you're experienced doesn't mean you can't be wrong from time to time. I mean, it seems like you were wrong in this case. Let's not forget you're in an episode you're about ready to kill a whole bunch of hostages until Holt stepped up. It's like everyone stand down to hostages. Basically, he was the one that was more willing to listen. All the guy was just so hard at it. He's at like such a tool. You know, like I said, in those situations, it's always you can't always think everything's going to play out the way it's always done because. Things as well as people are unpredictable. Yes, you can on occasion look at it and be like, okay, there's a particular pattern people follow. But at the same time, people can be irrational and erratic at times. So it's like you can't, well, not just that, but also very meticulous. So you can't always take it as fact of being like, oh, it's going to work like this because life in itself is very unpredictable. People themselves are very unpredictable. But that's just me kind of like ripping that apart like that. But I mean, when it was all said and done, it ended up very nicely. Um, things didn't necessarily go the way I was thinking things might go in this episode, just because I'm always looking for the twists and the turns, just because I always look for those because I like them the most. Uh, when you end up finding out, it's like, oh, there's a kidnapping, you know, because that guy, Pinker, Pinker, Pickering, uh, guy, uh, basically his daughter was basically the target, and they were trying to kidnap her. I was thinking like, oh, what if she's actually the mastermind behind this? Maybe this is all an attempt to get her dad's money, because the fact is she's the one that convinced her dad to let her go, and she didn't want, like, bodyguards. I mean, she, granted, she did have bodyguards this episode. Granted, they were not as many as they normally are, and these particular ones ended up getting killed, so... But, I mean, that ended up kind of being proven somewhat wrong. It, in my mind, the moment, like, her and... Cole started bonding a little bit, kind of over the whole, um, Die Hard thing. Like, I was thinking, like, okay, maybe she's not. And then at the same time, I was like, oh, maybe it's her date, that bumbling idiot. Maybe he's playing coy and being like, oh, I'm the bumbling idiot, but actually I'm the mastermind behind all this. But it's like, no, it wasn't. It was that dude. He was the dude that we kind of saw firsthand in the episode. It's kind of the last one that went down in this episode. It was also the mastermind behind everything, because basically he worked for... Uh, Pickering as a um, security guy, but he got fired. So this was basically revenge. Um, I actually kind of feel bad for that guy a little bit. I love when the fact this Cole was brought back and he's just like, oh, did they lay a finger on you? Because if, if they're lucky they didn't, because if I found out they did, I would have killed them all. I would have I would have, like, just acting on instinct, just went, went whoo, 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 at, like, like punching the air like he was really doing something. And the guy's like, be, one of the um, how, um, guys is like, be quiet. He's like, oh, yeah, yes, sir. I just want to say you guys are doing a great job. And even to that point in the, in the episode, he's just kind of like, okay, uh, I just, you are a stone cold fox. That's one of the things I learned about you. And Cole is basically like, dude, get out my face. And he's like, completely understandable and walked away so you gotta admit at very least he was an understandable guy it's just kind of sad because the entire episode cole is just kind of ignoring him the only time she really talks to him in this episode is when she's kind of explaining things like oh this is how things really are like oh everyone thinks it's this way it's like oh these guys actually have a bigger plan so that was kind of interesting and like always it astonishes me just how well the action is in this show just the whole um especially when it comes to lee's fighting style just like when they were on stage and he was taking those guys out, even like kind of 
um, there was a, he was fighting with, I think it was a stand, and he basically, like, rolled flip over it. That was pretty badass. It always astonishes me, like, I don't talk about it a lot, because I feel like I just go on and on about it, just because that's one of my favorite genres, it's just action, I love fighting, so... So to me, I would go on and on about it. So I don't really pick apart it that much because there's not much to say except for like, oh yeah, it was awesome. It looks so cool. Like, you know, I did like the fact is that Carter basically complained was basically like, yo, like I beat my guy first. It took you a while to beat your guy. And then at least like, I think I broke a rib or something. He's like, this isn't a competition. Yes, it is. Because you were complaining earlier. It's like the very least you could have done if we were on cool terms, you could have left me some action instead of you just being around here knocking the one guy out by yourself. So... Um, other things about this episode, love the fact is that Dee Dee left her son with Gerald, which is not the smartest move, because it's like, ooh, he's not the most trustworthy person, even Carter called her out on it. she's basically like, Carter, please stop bringing it up, the more I think about it, the more I'm gonna regret my decision, it's just, you know, it's like, oh, you found a babysitter, it's like, no, I found Gerald, you know, it's just like, yes, he's, he's not the most reliable person, granted, he handled the situation very well, but you, you do kind of see points in the episode, Dee Dee's, um, little boy is just looking at, like, Gerald, Uncle Gerald's an idiot, essentially. Even that whole conversation about Curious George being like, what's wrong with the guy in the yellow hat? Always leaving George everywhere. He knows George is going to cause problems, smash up the place, but he still does it every episode. He literally trashed the place last episode. Oh, I guess I'm going to leave George here in this pizza place. Hope he doesn't do anything. Um, I love the fact is that he even kind of added some commentary to it being like, you know, you need to break the cycle of destruction. Learn from your mistakes. I mean, really, it's just, I guess, in a way, it was almost like him com commenting on himself without realizing it. I think that was supposed to be, I mean, that's how I took it. I took it as like, oh, that's ironic coming from you out of anybody, mister. I'm always getting into trouble, mister. I'm always got my fingers in some kind of criminal activity, even if it's not the most big time, badass kind of criminal situation. It's still like, you're always in some illegal crap. You're always doing some stupid and illegal crap. So, But, like I said, a very good episode. But that's really all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.